Hello and welcome back to Between the Hashes, our weekly college football prediction show. Coming to you from Los Angeles, California, I am Matt Kime, your host. And today, we're going to be taking a look at a top 10 ACC matchup. NC State hosts Clemson. Now, this is NC State's first time being ranked in the top 10 since 2002, in which I believe Phillip Rivers was their quarterback at the time, just to give you an idea of how long it's been. NC State does not have a very great history with football. Like, they've been decent. They have had decent players coming through, the Russell Wilsons, the Phillip Rivers, etc. But they've never quite been a relevant power or anything. And so for the, they've started with their highest ever ranking. I believe they started at the AP poll of number 14 to start the year and then almost immediately blew it against East Carolina in a game that, frankly, they should have lost. The only reason they didn't lose to East Carolina is because East Carolina's kicker missed some of the easiest kicks you'll ever see because college kickers have a tendency to be inconsistent. But re it really, East Carolina should have won that game. NC State is led by Devin Leary, the, the quarterback who led them to an upset against Clemson last year. Can he do it again this year? Now, so far, Devin Leary's been off to a slow start. The offense, the passing offense is ranked 62nd in the country, nothing to write home about. And the rushing offense is ranked even worse. However, the defense is giving up only 11.8 yards per game. And so there is a bit of a push and pull with... Uh, NC State. And Dave Doran's been there for more than a few years now, and he's building something really good at NC State. But again, I don't, I don't know how much I trust NC State, especially after having seen that Ace Carolina game. Can Leary and this offense wake up a little bit as this season matures a little bit? Hopefully the answer is yes. I kind of have a hard time seeing it against Clemson. Now, on Clemson's side. Now, Clemson is once again led by DJ Uyagalele, uh, the quarterback who, stepped in for who first stepped in for Trevor Lawrence back in 2020 and has been their starter since that season and he has kind of had an up and down career he looked fantastic in that 2020 season but he quite hasn't regained some of that magic per se he hasn't really put up those great numbers and during a blowout win over their opener against georgia tech there were people calling for him to be benched despite the fact that the team won by four touchdowns now, there's a highly touted prospect second on the depth chart, Cade Klubnik, and all week after that opening week, all you could hear about was how the energy on that team just responded better when Klubnik was in the game. And, and that, that, that kind of thing is a little subjective. And by the time by the time he went into the game, it was kind of already in Clemson's control. So I, I don't know how much stock I put into a couple of drives against an opener that was one of the first schools to fire his coach with Jeff Collins, uh, Georgia Tech, by the way. And um, this brings me to the point that DJU maybe had one of his best games as a Clemson quarterback in a back and forth wild double overtime win against Wake Forest. Dabo, coach Dabo Sweeney has stood behind DJU and He's going to be their guy going forward, and can he keep it up? Can he keep some of the momentum that he gained with that Wake Forest game and then keep it going into this game because he's going to need it? Now, Clemson's offense really hasn't been that spectacular this year either, and this this stat might just go to how ridiculous college offenses have gotten in the last 15 years, but or they're averaging 43.8 points per game, which has them 20th but their passing and rushing yards per game both have them in the mid 40s um, in terms of overall rankings and so there's a lot of work that they could do. Clemson's biggest strength is its front seven. There's multiple players on that front who are going to be drafted in the first two days of next year's draft and so the matchup is going to be Devin Leary versus that front seven and then Devin Leary versus Clemson's biggest weakness which is its secondary which gave up a million and a half yards to Sam Hartman and company last week. And so it's it's almost like a strength versus strength and weakness versus weakness with this with this school. Um, and it just kind of comes down to who do you think is going to execute a little bit better. I personally lean Clemson, even though they're on the road. The line is six and a half. I don't know that they cover. So I'm going to say Clemson wins, but NC State covers. Just because I think that NC State's defense which has only given up 11.8 yards per game so far this season, 
is going to be more than enough to keep NC State in the game at home for a long enough time to where they can cover and have a chance to win, but I still think Clemson pulls this out in the end. Okay, our lightning round. We have a really exciting lightning round this week because all four games I'm about to feature are all ranked matchups. And to be honest, this was actually the hardest lightning round that I've picked up to this point because I quite honestly have no idea who's going to win most of these games. For example, number 7 Kentucky versus 14 Ole Miss. Will Levis has been shooting up on people's draft boards, but he meets a really, really good and somewhat underrated Ole Miss team led by Jackson Dart. I kind of lean Ole Miss simply just because they're at home, but I quite honestly have no idea. Kentucky's running offense has been really bad. They're getting some help back on that front, but I still think Ole Miss pulls this one out at home. Next matchup, second ranked Alabama versus 20th ranked Arkansas. I think this is one of the more vulnerable Alabama teams we've seen in the last 10 years with Nick Saban, um, but I do not think Arkansas is the team that's going to push him. I take Alabama here. Next one, Oklahoma State at Baylor. This is another game that I quite honestly have no idea who's going to win. I kind of lean Oklahoma State just because just because Baylor's offense versus Oklahoma State's defense. I think I like Oklahoma State there, but I honestly have no idea. But for right now, Oklahoma State. Wake Forest to travels to Tallahassee to take on Florida State, especially after an emotional loss and a really, really, really poor defensive showing. I think I give the edge to Florida State at home here. And this brings us to our underrated game of the week. I'm going to ride that Kansas Jayhawks bandwagon until the wheels fall off. And they take on Iowa State in what should be actually a pretty good quarterback matchup. You have Hunter Deckers versus Jalen Daniels, who has been putting up astounding numbers for Kansas. Now, Kansas' defense has been almost non-existent. They're giving up over 400 yards a game. They're, they're not why we're talking about that team. And frankly, they're... They're wide. Kansas really does have a defined ceiling. Can they keep it going for a few more weeks? I think so. I think Kansas gets the win against Iowa State here. Um, I'm going to go Rock Chalk Jayhawk, like I said, until the wheels fall off, which I don't anticipate happening for a few more weeks. Um, Iowa State's favored, so Kansas in the upset. That's all I have this week, so thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. We have weekly updates on the Washington Commanders with the John Kime Report. We have updates on the Washington Capitals with All Caps, hosted by former Capitals defenseman Carl Alsner and AP hockey writer Steve Wino. Hockey season's right around the corner. Uh, the Commanders are looking to turn it around this weekend against Dallas. Can they do it? I'm not the expert, so I'm not going to tell you. You can find all of that and more on Empire, that's A-M-P-I-R-E, media on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks, guys, and enjoy the games.